Do you want to know what to expect in real estate? Well, welcome to Behind the Real Estate. I am your host, Paul Panitkoff. I interview real estate agents so we can hear the real stories. Many of the stories that we're going to hear on the show will not be found in a real estate practice book. We can learn a lot from other real estate agents and the mistakes that they make and find the value and the education within their stories. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Lionel King. Yeah! Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank Lionel, you. It is a pleasure to have you. No, no, no. no. The pleasure is mine. Tall Paul. So tell me, Lionel. Yes. Why real estate? Um, actually by accident. Um, I, my, my grandfather built homes. My mother was an investor and my dad, so... So for me, I grew up, it was a chore. It wasn't a, I didn't see it as a financial thing. We would buy a house in the summer and spend the whole summer flipping it. I don't want to hear that. You know, <laughs> do this, do that. So to me, it was something I stayed away from, but I knew how to, I knew how to do. And then me and my mom started investing. And we were just doing a lot of deals. Um, and people just kept uh, calling me for help. And eventually somebody suggested, actually uh, Pam Norman at the time, she was a uh, a big broker doing tons of deals. She were she was doing all our loans, and she suggested that I get in. So she convinced me. And how long ago was that? Fourteen years ago. Fourteen years. Fourteen years ago. Mm-hmm. Fast. Fifteen. Fourteen fast years. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So it's been good. All right. What is the worst experience that you've ever had in real estate? The market crash. I got my license three months before. I did my first deal. Uh, my mom, m- my mom was set on being a part of me becoming a realtor. So after I got set up, she, I sold my first home to her. She was like, "I'm buying a house just because I want to be the first person." Right? <laughs> so, so my mom, um, my first home. Uh, I had a goal of selling ten homes in a month and I just got in and I really thought it was a realistic goal a couple months go by I had 10 homes in escrow I can't believe it I'm new how did I figure this out and literally in that day man it was just the bank closed dropping like flies like unreal and I remember I had a house we had on in Fairfield we were in contract it was a friend of mine who I was representing. And I remember him calling me, hey man, look, <laughs> I'll just lose the five grand. I don't want the house. And I'm like, yeah, and he's like, yeah, just forget the earnest money. I'm I'm not backing out. And it and it literally went from ten to probably two. And then those two fell. So you had ten escrows and then within a short period of time you were down to two. In like literally a week. Wow. So I, and I were I was new. So I really was like, I went from here to there pretty quick. And now real estate offices are closing. Coaching is not available. No one's teaching because brokers losing their stuff just like everybody else. So there was it was just like every man for himself. It's more like from here to here. Literally, <laughs> literally. I mean because. Because the problem is, you're the help. So it's just like now with our first responders. We take for granted that they have a life. The EMT don't live on EMT planet, right? He live on North Texas in a condo. His family live in Chicago. He here to work to provide for his family. So we forget that this guy has a life. He's a regular person. So when it happened, everybody became mere mortals because if you had a God complex or you had a way of seeing things that you felt your accomplishments made you better, well, you are in the same soup line as everybody else. And I, uh, so it wasn't really any help, you know, to, to show you what to do because no one knew what to do. So that was a rough five years or four years or something of just. You know, grinding. Don't know. Don't. 
He don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. You sold a house. How did you do it? You know. Oh, okay. I mean, it was guys who've been around say twenty something years, and now I'm the top producer, the king, and I sold three houses, right? And I'm like, this is nuts. So I watched a lot of people go through so much and then deal with the clients and then we losing our own personal. At the time we had 20 something properties and our problem was people just stopped paying rent. Mm -hmm. Well, I only could pay so many mortgages. I was, you know, this one, this one, this one, mine, you know, ours, the one we live my mom in, the one I'm in, and here go 20 other ones. And then you got 10 that's not paying and then he's kind of paying. So at the time the law was, you have to let them all go. You can't keep nothing. And, uh, you know, we had to set it up, figure it out how to do it. And then at the end, I figured out how to keep two or three. And uh, we kept those. Mm -hmm. But we let all of them go because that was a law. So I learned a lot in that time period. I watched a lot of, you know, iconic names. I won't give any examples because I don't want to shine negative light on nobody. But... Just I saw iconic names change as far as the bigger companies was being merged with other companies. Some companies was absorbed. I watched independents get absorbed into bigger companies, you know, going to it like a Remax where it's infrastructure. So you can just kind of plug and play and not have all the responsibility. And I just saw where people had to share responsibility to kind of save their existence. So, so learning in that environment was crazy. But a guy told me, he said, Lionel, no matter what happened, don't get out. I don't care if you sell one house a year, do not get out. I love that. Don't get out. He said, because if you get out, you won't know what to do if it happened again. If you stay in it, you'll get excited when it happened again. And when it happened, when, 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 when things became tricky this time, I knew exactly what to do. Like, I know I was the fireman. Right, I was the guy running in the building. Fireman. Instead of trying to, like you know, instead of, that's what I've been telling, that's my example is, do you want to be the fireman or the guy that's trying to pack? The guy that's trying to pack in the fire, he probably got mismatched socks and, cause he wasn't prepared for that. He went, he was watching TV, what just happened? But the fireman, he, he going with that intent to say that person who, who packed it. And now I'm that guy because now I know I contacted all of my clients. Hey, refile. ASAP. Don't wait. Let me do the math. Hold on. Let me get a let me call Christy Lindsay. Let me call Tiffany Smith. Let me hey, I need net sheets. I'm net sheet king. They're probably so tired of me and net sheets. Plaster title, shout out. Definitely. Legendary plaster title, Chicago titles. Hey, you, we Old appreciate Republic. you guys a lot. Old Republic. Yeah, we definitely appreciate you guys. Mary so, Susan. Oh, the legendary Mary Susan was definitely. So, you know, those guys helped me figure a lot of this stuff out with the math, and I was able to get probably almost everybody I talked to, or close to everybody, um, everybody 3%, you know, four and a half to three. You know, I sold it this, at this point, it was 4.75. So we, in some cases, earlier, not now, it's you know, doing this now, <laughs> but earlier, even some refi pools, and they kept the same payment. So yeah, so this time I was better prepared and mm -hmm. knew what to do. All right. In your opinion, what is the number one mistake that new real estate agents make? Wow. Oh, here's one. Thinking that other people will be excited for them. Do you mean other peers, other realtor, real estate agents? Anybody. Mm -hmm. It's your accomplishment. We're not in a society where everybody just celebrates each other all the time. So, we click likes, but we don't celebrate each other. So back in the day, in the, you know, the seventies and eighties, it was based on relationships, and you would get something, you would accomplish something, and everybody in the community supports it. I'm sending you my business. Then it won't matter. Your friend is gonna hold you to the same accountability as the other guy. So I always tell new agents, don't tell nobody you knew. Some people say everybody like new people. I don't like new people that's gonna handle a half a million dollar transaction. He don't know what he's doing. I didn't work 15 years to get this credit up and save his money for the new guy to come here and ruin my life. So I'm glad you knew. Might want to do something smaller, but give me your supervisor so they can work with me. You can learn. So that's why I explain to new agents is don't think people are going to be excited. Just come in hungry to work and learn. Don't look for the 
the Facebook post and everybody calling you. Nobody's calling you. You know why? Because you haven't earned it yet. So anybody new, what I'm telling you is be prepared to work. No one's going to be happy other than you. You know why? Because it's your venture. So I'm, what I'm saying is treat it like a business in the beginning. You know, because there's, there's no magic post. There's no one person to call. It's none of that. It's a grind. So I think for new agents, and especially a lot of younger agents, they are so sharp. Like, they have a whole different mindset in how they see things. So taking that mindset and pairing it with someone where that can give them experience, you watch new agents now sell 36 homes out of the game. It's because this, their mindset, they don't, they, they're not a second guessing group. They expect it. Like they, well, hey, I got my real estate license. I expect to sell houses. They don't go, I hope I sell a house. They expect to sell a house. So if you could take that person and give them a little kick and give them some old school game on real estate, I think they'll, they'll exceed what we did when we started. So I think the biggest thing for new agents is just don't look for the celebration from other people. You know, it's, it's your accomplishment. So just focus on what you need to do for your business and then put your all into it. Wow, that was a fucking great answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna actually snip that one. Okay. And put it into a short. Okay. That was a great answer. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I, that was, and it seemed like you were a little surprised by it when I asked you. Yeah. You are like, wow, and then boom. Yeah, yeah, I did. I was like, okay. <laughs> Have you ever had to fire a client in real estate? Definitely. Uh, so let me elaborate on that real quick. So difficult clients, I have a high tolerance for, I'm more of a people person, so if I can understand why a person do something, I'm patient. And I understand that if somebody don't know something, I understand that you will say something crazy, you might offend me, you don't know them better. If I go to his job, probably get fired. You know why? Because I don't know no better. I don't know what's going on in his job. So I try to keep that understanding when I deal with people. So I'm real patient. So I've probably had people that was over the top. Christy Lindsay can tell you about some of my transactions. <laughs> that, that's, that's a little more uh, complicated. But those are the ones that I thrive. So my example would be I had a client who was price sensitive. And I'm big on holding you accountable. Is this a seller or a buyer? A buyer. First time, um, had great income, everything was great, but they were a budget family. Like it was, everything was a budget. And we got into his home and they all of a sudden just wanted to write on it, but it was outside of the budget. So they were set on it. I was against it because I don't need an extra five grand, right? That, that's crazy. Like, I don't need it. So I'd rather just not do it. So that's what I did. So you were against it? 100% because I knew what the budget was and we had talked about it and you got kids coming up in certain situations. So so with my clients, I want to know everything you're doing. If you, you're in the cooking, if you go to cooking contest, okay, cool. You need freeway access because you're going to the airport all the time. Like, I just need to know all the stuff so I can figure it out. So we were kind of in that mode and we had agreed this was the budget. And I think it was going to increase the payment by 500 bucks. And then the reply was, I'll just work overtime. Well, that's super taboo in my world because if they take the overtime, you're going to be offended because you're not entitled to overtime. Even mandatory overtime, they can stop it when they want to. So I won't agree with you buying a house based on overtime. Right. He wanted to do it. So I told him, I'm not writing an offer. I'm bowing out. Keep in mind, I make less money. So I make more when you buy a bigger house. So selfishly, I can just say, hey, great idea, let's go. I'm choosing to take nothing. Because when I go grocery shopping, I don't want you talking about me saying I'm the one that did it. You did it. So I said, so go find one of the greedy people. And they'll, I said, if the guy just meets you and don't ask no questions and write, they don't care about you chasing a check. I said, so if that happens, let me know. And I'll be sitting there waiting. So they went, they wrote it, they got rejected, and they came back. And the wife, so she just explained it like, look, the guy turned the whole check away. He turned a bigger check away for us not to. And we talked. It was all good and I earned their respect. So that was the client of fire and rehire. And rehire. <laughs> and rehire. Oh, yeah. great story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Right. What is a crazy story that a new real estate agent can 
possibly expect in real estate? I got, it's a lot of them, but I would say one time I received a referral uh, from a friend of mine and uh, someone had passed the home, uh, elderly. And uh, so normally, you know, the elderly people pass away then it's kind of like who's in charge kind of. So the family trying to figure out who's the person. Mm -hmm. So throughout that process, someone moves into this house. <laughs> They move in and they bring like 20 people. So I get back to this house that should be empty. There's 20 people living in this house. Squatters. Real ones. Shopping carts, drugs, like the whole thing. <laughs> but this one person is the relative. So you can't get her out because she's the, she's legally the relative. Oh, so one of the squatters was a relative. Right. She invited the whole neighborhood to live in this house. It was crazy. It was neighbors calling. I didn't go to the, it took me nine months to sell this house. So you were the listing agent? Yes. And but you were having to deal with squatters, one of them being a relative. A relative. <laughs> and, and, and everyone is like super paranoid. Like you're not gonna do this. Like this was, this was insane. The police was always called. I didn't go to the house for two months because you know I had to wait your time period and all this stuff. So I go back. They had set the house on fire. They set the house on fire. Yes, they borrowed money from some guy <laughs> down the street, and he came and set the garage on fire. Was this intentional, or was this like totally a intentional? Like a meth lab exploding in the garage. <laughs> I met the guy who did it. You met the guy. Who I did met it. the guy. I was at the house, and he said, "Hey, man, look." Let me tell you what happened because he saw me looking on. And he said, Oh, yeah, we did that because. And I say, <laughs> But you got it sold. I actually got it sold, rehab, mm -hmm. put it back on the market. And my, my investor actually made an extra 60 grand because of all the time. The I, market increased during that period. Yeah, yeah. The market. And the refurbishing helped as well super. in the long run. Walked a brand new person in, no problems. Um, we were able to get the people out, all you know, until the end. Yeah, tell us, how did you end up getting them out? Um, just being a little more firm in, in the conversations. You just, you know, sometimes, you know. Like a baseball bat? Well, just, <laughs> just a smile, just, you know, just, you know, more inspiring, you know, just, you know, I, I think sometimes, you know, people in a situation, they expect you to look down on them and it's their defensive. You know, so when you say, stop, man, I'm not, you know. So I just, I just learned one by one. Hey, come here. Hey, look, at the end of the day, you're going to jail. That's what's happening. So stay here if you want. <laughs> so if you got a warrant, I gave you right. Help me help you. All right. And we just picked them off until we got to the end, got everybody out. What is your craziest experience in real estate that can help a new real estate agent out? Okay, here we go. You remember Chris Powell, the legendary Chris Powell? Yes. Chris Powell. Rest in peace, Chris Powell. Definitely. Max Gold. Thanks for everything, CP. <laughs> so, me and Chris used to work together at a Cobalt Banker. And we, you know, we came, uh, built a relationship at that point. Um, when he came to Remax, I was somewhere else, so he, hey, you gotta come with me. So, Chris Powell actually had a team, and it was just me and him. <laughs> so, he had this house he couldn't sell uh, in Vallejo, and I so he was so I wanted to impress him because my you know, I, hey, I'm gonna let him know I'm the man, right? So he said, "Man, I got this house I can't sell. You gotta help me." <laughs> so I said, "All right." So I go look at this house. It's right off the freeway, so you know it's just that's the problem off from the beginning. It's literally on front of the road. So you know, I'm seeing a pattern here that you're the guy to call when. <laughs> Well, well, that's what keeps happening, man. Trouble selling a house, you're the guy to call. <laughs> Come on in, clean it up. That's kind of what ended up happening. It's so. He called me, I said, okay. I called one of my investors. He said, hey, man, you know, got this house. He said, all right. He said, you know what? He flipped it to his buddy. Call such and such, he'll probably do it. I said, all right, cool. Call him, hey, you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it, great. All right, cool. We go look at the house. We come up with a number. I call Chris and say, look, I need this number. Asked me to sell it, I got it, let's go. I said, all right, let me call you back. I said, okay, cool. He called me back. Hell, I know. Let's go. 
sent me the offer. I said, great. Call my guy. It's good. It's good. We go. We send it. Everything great. We open escrow. Three days later, I ride by there, and I saw some people on the porch. So I, I'm on the freeway. <laughs> so I get off the freeway, double back. Bum, 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 bum. Hey, hey, y'all can't hang out. Y'all got to go. They looking. Oh, no, we're just passing by. Okay, well, you can't sit there, man. I get home that night, <laughs> and I'm watching the news, and, <laughs> and the house is on fire. And I don't know it's my listening, so I'm standing. So I walk in, and I kind of look at the TV, and I'm like, That looks familiar. That's, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Hey, it's, look, it's for sale. It's by the freeway. All right? And I'm like, oh, my God, it's my listing. <laughs> that is awesome. So, like, the fire trucks is coming. It's all on the news, and I'm like, so now I gotta call my client. I say, hey man. <laughs> but he's an investor, so you gotta know how to present it. Hey man, we might can get some money off. <laughs> so, so yeah, by the time it was done, they burnt down the second unit. So it was two units. And those people that was on the porch ended up breaking into the second unit. There's no electricity, and I'm assuming the fire is trying to start a fire, stay warm, or something, and burnt the whole unit down. So my suggestion to a new agent is this: you see squatters, call the police. <laughs> that's, that's number one. Uh, do not approach them. No, just call the police and just let them deal with it. But make sure you do because, you know, not saying I would have prevented it, but maybe I could have deterred it or something. I don't know, but just if you see squatters, call the law. Yeah, it's not worth your safety. Not at all. I don't know who you're dealing with. So, so we did sell it. We rehabbed it, sold it, and everything. Still made money, but but it was yeah. I was trying to impress the boss. <laughs> That's a great story. In your opinion, what is the biggest misconception about a real estate agent? Oh, that's that's pretty easy. I think the biggest misconception is that we make a ton of money. Mm. So. Let's say you make 50 grand in a month. That's a lot. But if you don't sell something for three years, that's 50 to three months, then that's 50 divided by three. If you don't sell nothing again, that's 50 divided by four. That's 50 divided by five. So now you make 6,000 a month. But the problem is you needed to know that five months ago. So how did you know five months ago you weren't gonna sell nothing for another five months? You didn't. Yes, but we got a story I got to tell you. Paul don't even know this story. So Paul has always been like this amazing guy. Like right? like this guy, and, and, I, and this is stuff I say behind his back. So this is, I'm not saying this because he's sitting there. You can ask my cousin Bobby King. I, we had this conversation not too long. This tall Paul right here. So I couldn't pronounce his last name. Now he's always, any house I want, take it, make your videos. I love what you guys are doing. And he's been, he was like, a huge supporter in us learning how to make videos. He would always, whatever you want, line was good. You need an open house, whatever you want, line. So we in the back recording the video and we get ready to end and then it's the shout out. I like to give a shout out and I go, Paul. And I'm like, how you say this? So I asked my son, because he's younger than me. He graduated college. He's supposed to know what to say. I said, what did he say? He say, well, I think it's say, I say, well, I don't think it's that. I said, well, what is it? I said, shoot, I'm calling. Hey, Paul. <laughs> I was like, well, how you say your last name? So he tell me, Palinka. Is that right? No. No, still not. Right. I did the right thing. So he tell me, and I'm like, okay. And he said it, and I said it. He said it, and I said it. So I'm like, damn, I don't ask him again. Oops. Dang, I don't have to ask him again. Okay, say it one time. Okay, cool. Bye. So I'm walking to the backyard. I'm saying it, saying it, saying it, saying it, saying it, saying it, saying it. <laughs> we sit down, we start, we go on, we get to the end. And my son, like, he's ready. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> I want to give another child to my man, Tom Paul. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so, and, and, and that was it. So it my, stopped. It stopped. It, it, it's like... It's just like crazy, man. It just stuck to him, and it was just like that's Tall Paul. So even people that I know, if they see your stuff, oh, we saw your boy Tall Paul stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. So, 
So yeah, so that's how they came. But if I like you, I make a nickname up. I'm so. super flattered. And when I called you, uh, I, I had to use that reference just to make sure you knew. And he offended me. He called me like told me who he was. I'm like, <laughs> dude, are you serious? Like, like, like he don't know I know this. I talked to an agent one time, and she told me that that she hadn't had a deal in a while, and he literally walked up and gave her a client and didn't want nothing. Who is this? I, I can't remember who it was, but she said she sat in the office with you or something at some point, and she hadn't had a deal in a long time, man, and she said you would look at her and you see her grinding, and you walked over and you had got a buyer that was dialed in from one of your listings, and you gave it to her. I was like, that's why I love this dude, man. Because I was telling her how, I, I was like, man, this is a genuine dude. And she said, let me tell you about Paul. So I was like, so I, I'm a sentimental guy. People see me as a, you know, er, all the time. But I appreciate simple things. My people from the country, so we just real simple people. And I appreciate genuine stuff. So I know who you are as tall Paul. Because I, I, like I say, you never knew I knew that. Like, he literally is the first time he hear me even talk about this. Like, That's the truth. So, 100%, man, just thanks for bringing me in, and, and I applaud everything you do, man, for real. Lionel, it was such a pleasure to have you. Thank Truly. you. Truly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching another episode of Behind the Real Estate. If you have questions that you would like me to ask in upcoming interviews, please leave in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button, as well as the notification bell, so you don't miss the latest interview. Oh, 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 oh,